Hey everybody, it's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About. Today we're going to be going over my top 10 picks for a predatory saltwater tank. This order is based off my experience with the fish, their personalities, their looks, and just my overall liking of them. We're going to be getting, seeing groupers, triggers, eels, puffers, and more that do well in those more aggressive tanks. Jumping right into it, at number 10, we're going to give it to the Snowflake Eel. The Snowflake Eel is going to bring a very hyper personality and one that is not afraid to eat when the time comes. They are a relatively cheaper option for an eel and can be found as a juvenile often. They're an eel I recommend to any beginners because they get accustomed to tank life quick and they're going to learn to eat from you fairly quickly and sometimes they even get very aggressive when eating. These moray eels typically grow about two feet long so not too big for an eel. So they're going to require at least a 55 gallon. That gives them four feet long, so plenty of room to stretch out and have a good time. Usually costing about $100. With eels, you always want to have a very soft sand bed so it does not scratch their skin. Also give them some nice caves to travel in and spots to hide until feeding times. Because most of the times with an eel, they're going to be wrapped up behind the rocks and just be poking their head out. One really cool thing we did for a customer one time is we built a maze out of PVC pipes and buried it under the sand so that the eel had the tank plus all that maze up under to travel around in. So it gave them almost double the amount of room. With eels, you wanna train them to eat certain foods from a skewer. So frozen shrimp from the grocery store is always a great choice. You can thaw those out, cut them up into pieces, put it on the skewer and try to tease them to come out and eat it. Also, clams on the half shell, silver sides, even squid are a good meaty choice. When trying to find other tank mates to put with eels, I always try to warn y'all, if it can fit in their mouth, then expect them to eat it eventually. At number nine, we're going to have the panther grouper. The panther grouper is a very popular choice for people looking for a larger fish to add into their predatory tank. These groupers are usually sold as juveniles as they can be an eye catcher to any new hobbyist looking for their next fish. They're really cute. They look like a small little Dalmatian in the tank. But most of the time, the owners will be bringing them back six months to a year later because they get very large, very fast, and they're a very aggressive fish. Growing over two feet long by adulthood, this requires a much larger aquarium for this fish, usually around 250 to 300 gallons. Having a lifespan of 20 years, this fish really becomes the dog or cat of the family. Panther groupers are a very laid back swimmer in the tank until it comes time to eating. They will be the first to the top and their stomachs just seem like endless pits. They're going to continue to eat food and steal it from others. So it can definitely be a challenge when trying to feed your eels that are a bit slower to take the food or a shy trigger fish. So just be patient with them. Try to distract them on one side of the tank while you can feed your other fish on the other. Tank-wise, you want to have a lot of open space for them to swim around. Tanks with tons of live rock typically aren't best for these. Just kind of makes them feel claustrophobic. You can tell he just kind of swims in a corner. You want to have that big open space for him to spread out. Have some large, very open caverns and overhangings for them to hide under. Being a predator, expect them to feed shrimp, other meaty foods multiple times a week and always expect that if it can fit in their mouth, they will eat it. Juveniles can be as low as $60 and you'll usually be spending a little bit more for a larger one. At number eight, we have the blue jaw trigger fish. These are particularly cool if you're looking to have a pair of trigger fish. The male and females are easily distinguishable and will bond easily in the tank setting. And most of the time, people try to sell them as pairs. It's great to see the two chase each other around in the tank, having a time eating together, hiding together. It's just a really fun experience to have in the tank. The blue jaws are going to be semi-aggressive, but not too aggressive to the extent of what maybe like a clown trigger would be. So it's definitely a more docile trigger fish to have in your aquarium. Triggerfish need to grind their teeth down, so make sure you're giving them things that take some chewing before they just swallow it whole. So we would typically drop frozen clams on a half shell just straight from the freezer into the tank. So this allowed them to pick at that multiple times, grind those teeth down before it had thawed enough for them to just straight up eat it. Triggerfish tend to swim out in the open, but it's good to give them caves to explore in. Usually 
they will wedge themselves between cracks of rocks when sleeping. So if they are upside down at night, don't worry. That's just how they feel safe. But give them a lot of space in there to be swimming around, checking out different holes and crevices for them to explore. Usually costing around $100 to get one. Sometimes you can get a deal whenever you're getting pairs of them. They'll get up to about nine inches by adulthood, so not too big, but expect to have a good size aquarium for them. At number seven, we have the dog face puffer fish. If you're wanting a fish that resembles a dog, look no further. I swear their personality even resembles it. Puffers will always be at the front of the tank giving you attention when they see you walk by, especially these erythron puffers. Some will even spit water at you to get your attention when they are getting hungry. Typically costing about $120 to get one, they will require at least a tank in the 100 gallon plus range. The dog face is known for their sharp ever growing teeth, so you'll want to make sure to feed them things that will help them grind it down. Frozen shrimp that they can chew on, clams, silver sides, all great choices. These puffers are going to grow to be about 12 inches by adulthood in most cases. They're an extremely active swimmer and love to swim out in the open, so don't cram them in too much live rock. As most puffers are mostly messy eaters, you'll want to make sure they stay on top of your levels. They may require water changes more often to keep up with their waste. At number six, we have the Emperor Snapper Fish. If you're looking for another fish that's going to get huge, look no further than the Emperor. This snapper will usually cost you around $80 for a juvenile, and they can eventually grow over 30 inches long. I mean, it's huge. Definitely the biggest fish we have on this list. Make sure this fish is going in a tank around 300 gallons as they will need it. The snapper has a personality similar to the panther grouper, but is a much more aggressive swimmer in the tank. They will charge the glass at times when they're getting ready to feed. They tend to swim out in the open at all times with their size, but you want to make sure they still got plenty of space to hide up under in some overhangings and caves that you can build in your tank. This was one of the most aggravating fish to have in the predator tank because of feeding times. They will eat continuously. We would have to have one person on one end of the tank distracting him with shrimp while we tried to get everyone else fed in the tank like our eels and our trigger fish because this guy was also just a bottomless pit and would continue to eat and eat and eat. But on the other hand, you're getting a very beautiful fish that has great red and white coloration on him. They get very large, so some people want that more aggressive fish to take care of. Snappers are going to be like groupers, so anything that can fit in his mouth should be seen as a snack. So be careful with which tank mates you place them with. We've made it to the top five, and we got an all-time favorite in the saltwater hobby, the clown trigger fish. This coloration on the fish really catches everyone's eyes, especially as juveniles and even up to adulthood. They stay really pretty and just have this crazy maze polka dots, lines, colors, they have everything on this fish. This is going to be a much more aggressive level of triggers, some places charging $200 just to get one. They'll usually get up to about a foot and a half long by adulthood in the wild, but in a typical tank setting, seen some that are five plus years, and they're usually about eight inches by the end of it. Trigger fish will need plenty of harder meaty food to ground their teeth on, the tank should have a nice live rock structure with plenty of caves and overhangings for them to explore in. The clown triggers are a very active fish and they will be swimming speedily fast around the tank constantly throughout the day. So with an active fish, that means you'll want to feed them often because a full belly means less out of the ordinary aggression from them. If you start to see them picking at fins a little too heavily or being aggressive towards other fish, just try to keep feeding them some more. You'll want to be careful. If you're thinking about mixing different trigger fish together because it can be tricky to get one to share the same space with the other, your best bet is to add them at the same time because it just causes a very hard task. If you already have one in there and they're used to the tank, they kind of have their property around there and then you drop another one in there, it just ends up being chaos. And number four, we got the lionfish. I had to choose the face of saltwater fish and I couldn't pick the clownfish or regal tang, the lionfish would be it. Everyone knows a lionfish, whether they're in the hobby or not, they can pick it out at the aquarium. It is just a known fish out there. A lionfish is a fairly peaceful fish when grouped with other predatory tank mates. The times you really are going to see a lionfish begin to get aggressive is when they're scouting for food. 
they will push anyone out of the way to get to that shrimp. We would usually thaw shrimp, clams, or silver sides, put them on a skewer, and try to tease the line fish to come out. At the beginning, this can be a very, very hard task to get them used to eating from you, so you might want to have some live foods like ghost shrimp handy so that you can use those at the same time you're trying to feed them from the skewer. They will catch on, just be patient in the process. There are a ton of line fish to choose from, but my favorite has got to be the volatile line fish. We'll usually run you about $120 to get one. That'll get up to about a foot long, sometimes even bigger. So you need plenty of room to have one of these. I'd recommend, you know, 120 or higher. That'll give them plenty of room to swim around in. They do have venomous spines on top, so be very careful when handling them. They will not charge you with these spines, but in a typical case that someone gets stung, it's because they did not look to see where they were and stuck their hand behind a cave or trying to get to one of their filters down at the bottom and they get hit because he's right there beside it. So find out where he is before going and digging around in your tank. Limefish tend to swim out in the open, but they do like to hide under overhangings, especially at night. Make sure to give them a nice little live structure that fits that. Anything that can fit in a linefish's mouth will be eaten, even your inverts. Linefish can be in groups in the tank. They won't really pair up, but they also won't be aggressive towards one another. So if you wanted to put a few in in a very large predator tank, they do just fine. At number three, we're going to have the zebra moray eel. This is one of my all-time favorite eels and one that I hope to have in my own tank once I get something larger. These zebras will usually run about $150 for a juvenile and up from there if you're looking for a larger one. They'll grow up to 5 feet long, so you need a good size tank that has a lot of length. I'd recommend a 180 or above. That range is usually in the 6 feet in length, so that gives them plenty of room to stretch out. Now usually an eel is going to be balled up in the rocks, but there have been cases where they will literally go from one end to the other, so you want to give them plenty of space to do so. This is one of the most laid back eels in the hobby. We used to hand feed ours because of how docile it was during feeding times. But of course you want to try to get them feeding on a skewer. As juveniles, eels will usually eat every day, but as they get older, they'll usually prefer larger portions every other day or every couple of days. So just study and practice with the one you have to see how hungry it is during the week. While this is a very peaceful eel, I'd still follow the rule of if it can fit in its mouth, he will eventually eat it. We used to have cleaner shrimps in the tank with this one that would clean its mouth constantly throughout the day, and that was a sight to see. But one day they just magically disappeared, so it's pretty obvious where they had gone. I typically only put one eel in a tank unless the tank is just massive. We have housed two different breeds of eels in a 300 gallon tank before and never had any issues, but a majority of the time I recommend only choosing one. You want to feed them portions of meaty foods like scallops, squid, shrimp, or clams. These eels, you definitely want to make sure to have a glass lid on as they are master escape artists. So make sure every little crevice is covered up. At number two, we have a very beautiful predator to add to the tank, a harlequin tusk. The colors on this fish really pop, especially under some high output LEDs. These fish will easily cost you $200 and can eventually grow up to 10 inches in length. These semi-aggressive predators are known for their bright blue tusks that are used to crunch down on inverts like crabs and shrimp. These fish do well in a wide range of other tank mates, including more docile fish like tangs and angelfish, to even aggressive fish like triggers and groupers. At the beginning, they can be shy in a tank setting, but as they get acclimated, you'll see them out and about all the time. Harlequin tusk is an explorer and will prefer a dense live rock structure with a good maze to explore with caves and overhangings to hide under. Harlequin tusks are bad about stuffing their mouths too full of food so make sure to cut the meaty food up into small enough pieces that they will not choke on. We always had an issue with harlequin tusks stealing the puffer's larger pieces before we could get them in his own cuts. They will eat any kind of meaty foods but their favorites are going to include shrimp, silver sides, and clams. And at number one, we have an all-time favorite between hobbyists and others that just see their cute face running up to the glass, the porcupine puffer fish. Getting one as a juvenile can run you about $80, but an adult will be well over $200. These puffers grow a foot long and will do best in a 180 or larger aquarium. 
These puffers have a very friendly attitude in the tank. Anytime you come up to it, they'll be right there thinking you're about to give them tons of food. And if you don't, they'll likely spit water at you. In the tank setting, they are semi-aggressive. Too peaceful in my experience. They really only show that aggression when it's feeding time. And they will chase anyone that takes their food. We used to have a clown trigger and a puffer together. And they were the world's worst about chasing each other for whoever got the first bite in the tank. These porcupine puffers can puff up, leaving all their spikes out to easily get stabbed by anyone in sight. A common misconception is that the spines hold the venom inside and will inject you like a needle, but it's actually their skin itself that releases the toxins. These porcupines also have ever-growing teeth, even though it doesn't look like it. So you want to make sure to feed them things that they can chew on, like larger pieces of shrimp with the shell still on. Or clam shells that have to be broken into to get to the meat. That's a great one for them. Porcupines will do well in any predatory fish. And can even be with more docile fish in a fowler tank. They won't go after other fish besides nipping at their fins. But they will go after your inverts like your fire shrimp or emerald crabs. Those are just going to be delicious snacks for them. The typical tank should have lots of open space. But also some larger overhangings for the puffer to get up under during the night or if it needs to hide. As juveniles, they take a lot of patience to entice them to eat. So just take your time and continue to tease them with the shrimp on the skewer. If all else fails, go get some cheap inverts for a live feast. That's going to conclude today's episode of All About. Thank you for all tuning in. If there was another predator that did not make the list, that you absolutely love, please leave it down in the comments for others to check out that one as it might end up being the one they choose for their own predator tank. We're also celebrating our 300th episode of All About with new t-shirts on the website, so go check them out. Designed and made by yours truly. I can't thank y'all enough for all your support. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see y'all later. Enjoy your weekend.